What causes the chest sensation during DIV ozone injections? I'm Paula, the crazy ozone lady, and in this video I will talk about this discomfort, the lung discomfort that some people experience in the lungs when they receive DIV ozone injections. So, first of all, although I am a licensed alternative healthcare provider in my country, I want to point out that this is not medical advice. So this video is made only for informational purposes. So if you're sick, don't watch videos by a self-proclaimed crazy woman. Just go and see your doctor. So what is this chest sensation? What am I talking about? So anyone who has received a DAV ozone injections or people, some people, well, it's not rare. It's quite a common occurrence. So uh, this is something that happens often that uh, one develops a discomfort in the lungs that can be actually really, really painful. And it is kind of like a pressure on the chest or even pain. And I have performed a DIV ozone injection on myself yesterday, and it was one of the most painful DIVs that I have done in a long time. So yes, so it can be extremely uncomfortable. So the question is, okay, so what is it? And Dr. Robbins, the absolute expert in DIV ozone injections, he says that this is a type of a Herxheimer reaction or a type of a healing crisis that basically if there is an infection present in the lungs, if there are some pathogens that uh, ozone while it's clearing the infection, while it's killing those bacteria or viruses or whatever kind of infection may be going on, that this will result in developing this chest sensation. And I believe that he is wrong and I hope to provide evidence for this. I hope to provide proof that this is not the case, that this chest lung sensation has nothing to do with a die-off or a Herxheimer reaction. And the reason why I say this is because the same thing also occurs during oxyvenierung, so the intravenous oxygen therapy that has been practiced in Germany for the past 60 years. So what Oxyvenierung is, and so this, books, this book, Dr. Franz Kreuter, he talks about this. So this is basically what it says that it is. This is the injection of pure oxygen intravenously. And this chest sensation can also occur when you inject just pure oxygen. So there is no ozone in this whatsoever, just pure oxygen. And yet people can develop this chest sensation. So in my opinion, this proves that this is not a Herxheimer reaction because pure oxygen is not antibacterial, antiviral or antipathogenic. So this just would not make sense that that just the injection of pure oxygen would trigger Herxheimer reaction. And so, okay, so what is it? How can it be explained? And Dr. Franz Kreuzer, in this book here, he says there are two very likely possibilities. So one, this is, he says, that the injection of pure oxygen most likely triggers the production of a peptide in the lungs, which is called endothaline. And what endothelin does, it basically constricts the blood vessels in the lungs. So it's a local vasoconstrictor. And what that does together with the injection of gas it, uh, is that basically microembolisms happen. So yes, so this chest sensation most likely is a microembolism. Those are, this is the occurrence of microembolisms in the lungs. And so some people may find this scary and I think this is not, not um, a bad idea because you should have a healthy respect for DIV also injections. And as I laid out in my previous video, there's quite a number of things that can go horribly wrong during DIV also injections. So it's good to know about what is really going on and what can, um, what can go wrong during those injections. So 
so yeah, so basically the uh, it's the combination of the injection of gas which creates those tiny gas bubbles together with that peptide that uh, makes the blood vessels even smaller. So and this creates those microembolisms which trigger those uncomfortable chest sensations. So uh, the question is, well, when that happens, how to deal with this? What do you do when you develop this chest pressure or chest pain? And the first thing that you need to do is you need to remain immobile and horizontal or reclined and do not move and just wait it out. So in most cases, this chest sensation will pass after 30 to 60 minutes. And this is also something that I experienced uh, yesterday. So uh, the first 30 minutes, I thought that they would last forever, that they would never pass. And But after 30 minutes, I was already feeling much, much better. And then after another 30 minutes, so a total of 60 minutes, the chest pain was completely gone. And I didn't feel any discomfort for the rest of the day. And today also my lungs are perfectly fine. But immediately after the injection, it was really highly uncomfortable. So yeah, so first thing what you do, you, you just wait it out. And in that time, it is important that you remain horizontal or reclined and don't move. Don't even have lively conversations. Don't laugh. Don't move your arms or other body parts because you don't want to stimulate blood circulation. You want the tiny gas bubbles to be slowly absorbed by the blood and then the chest sensation will just go away with time. So this is this is the most important thing that you should do. Another thing that you can do, you can take vitamin C. So dissolve vitamin C powder in water and drink lots of it. Another thing that Dr. Franz Kreuzer here suggests what one can do is to take a drug called theophylline. Now this is a prescription drug, so you will have to go to your doctor and have it prescribed. Or uh, So you can either have it prescribed before the first DIV or for the next DIV injection. And what theophylline does, so theophylline is also prescribed for people with a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Because what it does, it does exactly the opposite of what this endothelium peptide does. So it dilate, dilates especially the arteries, the blood vessels in the lungs. So this will resolve the sensation of chest pressure. And if you take it before the DIV injection, then it may even prevent you from developing it in the first place. Um, all right, so another question is uh, how to prevent it. Can you prevent those chest sensations from occurring? And yes, I believe you can. So one thing that you can do, you can do sports, you can do regular physical exercises, because what has been observed is that people who are physically active, so athletes, people who do sports regularly, they either don't develop this chest sensation or it, or it takes much more oxygen for them to develop it. And this has most likely to do with the fact that you can actually train your blood to absorb more oxygen. And this is something that I will explain uh, in a bit. So if you can do sports, then do sports. Now I understand that some people are chronically sick and they cannot do sports. Some people actually get very sick when they do physical exercises, like me, for example. Due to my neck problems, I cannot do any type of physical exercises. But if you can, then do sports. Another thing that I've already mentioned is that it's very, very important to remain either reclined or in a horizontal position when you inject DIV ozone injections. So do essentially everything uh, the other way than how the YouTube videos are showing. So do none of what you can see in all those different uh, YouTube videos, how people inject themselves with DIV uh, ozone injections, like do none of those things. So do not be upright, do not, do not walk around while you inject yourself. This is the worst possible idea that you could do. Don't even sit upright in a chair like I'm sitting right now. You want to be lying down horizontal or reclined. You want to be stretched out. 
Because I uh, think about it, so, uh, so lung embolism is one problem that can occur. And by the way, if the uh, lung embolism occurs during the injection and you keep injecting, nevertheless, which you should never do, then this can damage your lungs and this can even put pressure on your heart. So, so this is quite a serious matter. But now let's say you inject uh, the gas and you are upright and then somehow some of the gas got into your arteries and into your brain. So this is, and this is the last place where you want gas to go. But when you are upright, this is where gas will go because gas rises. The gas bubbles, of course, rise in your body. And when you are standing or if you're in an upright position, this is where the gas will go into your brain. And that's not what you want. So this is really important that when you do DAV ozone injections, you are horizontal or in a reclined position. Do not ever do it the way you see it on other YouTube videos. This can really go horribly wrong. So the so yes, yeah, so another way to prevent the sensations to be reclined and horizontal. Uh, another way to prevent this <coughs> sorry during future injections is to continue with the injections. So when you do the injection and this chest sensation starts occurring, then of course that injection you need to abort it, you need to stop immediately. But you should continue with the injections the following days or weeks or months. And what you will notice that with time uh, you will get that sensation less and less until you can even increase the amount of how much gas you can inject before you develop that chest pain. And this has something to do that already I mentioned it. You can actually, it's, it's most likely that you can actually train your blood to be able to absorb more oxygen. Another trick how to prevent this sensation from occurring is to inject veins which are further away from your lungs. So for example, if you have varicose veins on your lungs, inject, uh, 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 if you have varicose veins on your legs, then inject those. Some people even inject veins on their feet and you can do that as well. And when this is done, then uh, what you will observe is that that lung sensation will either not occur or that you will be able to inject uh, much more gas before it sets in. And this can be explained uh, through the fact that the, uh, the gas has a much longer way to travel from the injection until it reaches the lungs. And by the time that it has reached the lungs, then of course uh, it had much more opportunity to be absorbed by the blood and there are less uh, oxygen bubbles present because they have all been absorbed already. And so if there are no gas bubbles anymore in the bloodstream, then of course no uh, microembolisms can happen and hence no chest pain occurs. So some may be skeptical and they may think, well, hold on a second, if this is not a Herxheimer reaction, if what you're saying that this is just a type of a physiological reaction, which it is, then how do you explain that people get that chest sensation less and less the more injections they do? And this can be explained through something that is called allosteric control. So here, this is an article about this. So you see hemoglobin. Uh, so hemoglobin, this is the molecule in our blood that is uh, responsible for absorbing and transporting oxygen. And so each hemoglobin molecule is able to bind four different oxygen molecules. And allosteric control, so uh, this hemoglobin is controlled by allosteri. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly. And so what allosteri is, is explained nicely here. It says, this is, the binding of oxygen is cooperative, meaning binding of the first oxygen molecule increases the affinity of the hemoglobin molecule for additional oxygen molecules. So basically what this means is that the more oxygen hemoglobin can bind, the more additional oxygen it is able to take in. So 
basically this means that you can sort of train your blood to be able to absorb more oxygen and this explains also why people who do sports regularly that they do not experience this sensation of chest pain as readily as people who don't do any sports at all so yeah so the key takeaways here are that the chest sensation those are microembolisms when they occur the div ozone injection should be stopped immediately and then you should just wait it out 30 to 60 minutes it'll pass in most cases uh, if not then take either lots of vitamin c or uh, before the next DIV ozone injection have theophylline prescribed already have it prescribed before your first DIV ozone injection and have it at the ready in case this uh, this occurs I, i've never taken theophylline so i don't know how well this works uh, but this is something that this doctor here uh, recommends so yeah those are the key takeaways and yes again there is definitely a right and a wrong way how to do div ozone injections if you do it the wrong way there's many things that can go wrong pretty badly wrong so before you try your first div ozone injection make sure that you have been instructed by someone experienced huh? someone experienced yeah now, if you want to more, if you have, uh, if you want to have more information about DAV ozone injections, subscribe to my newsletter. You will find the link below. It's the part of slash news There may be an announcement about DAV ozone injections coming soon, so you want to be kept up to date if you're interested in this type of treatment, ozone treatment. So, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.